Number 88. What volume of 0.08892 molarity of nitric acid, which is HNO3, is required to react completely with 0.2352 grams of potassium hydrogen phosphate? And then they give us this nice big equation here. If you guys know me by now, we always got to write the equation bigger. So let's get down to it just so that we can, you know, work with it better. Two HNO3s. And I already see that there are coefficients in front, aka the big numbers. So I'm assuming that this is going to be balanced. So as I'm doing this, you know, if you want to check that it's balanced, go right ahead. But I'm pretty sure that it's balanced. And as you can see here, I'm writing down no, uh, no states because who cares? No one cares. No one cares what state these are. We don't need the states in order to get the correct answer. So we are good. Next thing I'm going to do... <laughs> I crack myself up sometimes. Anyway, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to write down the givens, right? They told us that we have 0 0.2352 grams of potassium hydrogen phosphate. So I just got to find out which one of these four is potassium hydrogen phosphate. It's this one. Potassium, K, hydrogen, H, phosphate, PO4. So I have 0 0.2352 grams of this. And then... It's asking for the volume of nitric acid, and they told me that it has a molarity of 0 0.08892. So I have 0 0.08892 molarity, and they're looking for the volume. Since the question is designed around HNO3, I say to myself, okay, what can I do with this? They gave me a molarity, and they're looking for a volume. I'm saying, hmm, do I know any formulas between molarity and a volume? Yeah, sure thing I do, right? The number one molarity formula. We've been through this, right? Molarity equals moles divided by liters. That's the volume, right? A liter is a volume. So if I can just rearrange this formula just for simplicity of the video, you can keep it like this and then cross multiply and solve. But just for simplicity of the video, I can just say that the same formula would be liters equals moles divided by molarity, right? Now, they told me what the molarity was, right? They told me that capital M was 0 0.08892 molarity. Now, if they're looking for a volume, which is the liters, that means that I should know what the moles are. But they didn't tell me what the moles were. So this is what we secretly have to find. I have to find out the moles of HNO3. That's where we're going to be t talking about this number. Remember, if we need to get to moles of a compound and they gave me a mass amount or an amount of another compound on my periodic table, I can use stoichiometry. We've done this time and time again, right, all throughout this playlist, chapter four. So we got this. You guys probably have seen the flow chart by now. I'm just going to pull this down here. And the flow chart is this, right? It's the grams to moles to moles to grams. Now, we just need to find out the moles of the compound that we want. This is the starting material. So I'm going to say that we're going to start with 0 0.2352 grams of, not A anymore, but of that potassium hydrogen phosphate. I'm just giving myself a little room. K2HPO4. From there, I could get moles of that compound. K2, K2HPO4. And then from there, I can convert to moles of HNO3. In this case, I don't even need the grams of HNO3 because I'm only looking for the moles. So I can stop right at this level right here. And there is our catered flowchart for this problem. So let's give it a shot. All dimensional analysis, you've got this. Start with what you're given, 0 0.2352, and this is grams of K2HPO4. If you don't want that unit anymore and you're converting, you multiply by a ratio. You throw that unit on the opposite side, aka the bottom, and you just look ahead. Okay, we're going to moles of that compound, so I'm just going to write that down. Mole of K2HPO4. Looks pretty good to me. 
And if it's a gram to mole relationship of the same compound, that's always the periodic table. So when you're using the periodic table, it's always one mole. And then the mass on the periodic table is in the gram number. So calc's out, periodic table out. Let's find the molar mass of K2HPO4. So we got two potassiums, two times 39.1 plus one hydrogen. So 1.008, one phosphorus, so 30.97, and then four oxygens, four times 16. So I get roughly 174.176, actually 178. That's a four, cool. Grams of the potassium hydrogen phosphate cancel. We're at moles of this. So let's just keep going. We just need to do one more step. Mole of K2HPO4 on the bottom. You could always look over to see who goes on the top. Mole of HNO3, because that's what we wanted. A multi-mole -mole relationship of different compounds is always using the periodic table. And in this case, you use the coefficients. So in front of the HNO3, I see that I have a two. So that represents that I need two moles of HNO3. So I'll put a two here on the top of the fraction. And then there was no number in front of K2HPO4. That signifies that I only need one of them. So that means one mole goes down here. Mole of potassium hydrogen phosphate cancel. And now let's just get the moles of HNO3. 0.2352 divided by 174.178 times two, and I get 0 0.0027, uh, we'll say 0, 01 moles of HNO3. Now I know what this number is. It's 0 0.002701 moles. So now all I have to do is plug in those numbers to finally find my liters, because they wanted to know what volume. So liter, equals mole on the top, 0 0.002701, and then divided by the molarity, 0 0.08892, and then you just get the answer. As simple as that, guys. 0 0.002701 divided by 0 0.08892. Looks like I need four sig figs in this case, if anybody cared about sig figs. There's four sig figs here and four sig figs here, so we should have four of them. So I'll say 0 0.0303, and then that rounds that up, so it should be an eight. That's in liters. If you need this in milliliters, you could just times this by 1,000. It would technically be 30.38 milliliters. Uh, but either way, it's fine with me. They didn't specify in the question, right? They just asked for volume. I don't like how that is crashing with that color, so we'll keep it this way. Cool. And call it a day, all right? Hopefully this helped. What'd you guys think? Let me know in the comments, okay? Good luck on your future tests and quizzes, and let's keep studying hard. You guys got this. Chem is fun, and I'm here with you every step of the way. So let's keep learning, all right? I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.